Alright, so conic sections can be drawn on the Cartesian plane or any flat plane for that matter using the following locus problem. Now suppose that I have a fixed point called the focus, F for focus, and a moving point P, and then a straight line, and the straight line is called the directrix. These three items are all I need to construct the conic sections which are going to be one, the ellipse, two, the parabola, and three, the hyperbola. So how is this going to happen? Well, the locus or the path that this point P will follow is going to form one of these three conic sections. And it all depends on the ratio between the focus to the point P and the perpendicular distance from P to the directrix as to the shape of the locus. So let's call the distance from the focus to point P, PF, and the distance from P to the directrix as PD. Then the ratio between PF and PD is called the eccentricity. Okay, so let's recap. As long as the distance from point P, the moving point to the focus, and the distance from point P to the directrix, as long as the ratio between these distances is a constant called the eccentricity, we will form one of these three shapes. And to form an ellipse, the eccentricity or well, the ratio must be between 0 and 1. To form a parabola, the eccentricity is equal to 1. And to form a hyperbola, the eccentricity is greater than 1. And now I want to demonstrate how this works on some conical graph paper. So what we have here is simply a bunch of concentric circles at the centre that are tangent to equidistant parallel lines and this forms the conical graph paper. So the center point is going to be the focus and I will choose this line as a directrix. So we are four units away from the center and let's confirm that we get a parabola when E equals 1, when the uh, eccentricity is equal to 1. Alright so now this point we can see so the distance from this point to the centre is 2 units and the distance from this point to the directrix is 2 units as well. Okay, now for the next point, it has to be 3 units away from the circle. So 1, 2, 3 circles away from the focus and it also has to be 3 units away from the directrix. So let's have a look. We have 1, 2, 3 units for the directrix. So that means the ratio between this distance and this distance is still equal to 1. And similarly, we have a point on the opposite side as well. And if I continue in this fashion, you can see that if I connect all these dots, that what we get is a parabola. Alright, let's try another example. We know that we should get an ellipse when the eccentricity is between 0 and 1. So let's confirm that we do when we choose an eccentricity of let's say 1 half. So 1 half lies between 0 and 1. Again, my focus is in the middle of these concentric circles. And now I'm going to choose a line that's 
one, two, three, four, five, six units away from the center. So if I choose this as my directrix. All right, so what this means is my point here on the horizontal line, the distance from it to the focus, which is two units, has to be half of the distance from it to the directrix. So we have one, two, three, four units to the directrix and one, two units to the focus. So two over four is equal to a half. On the next circle out, which means I'm three circles or three units away from the focus, I now have to be six units away from the directrix. So, so six from the directrix and three from the focus is directly vertically above and below the focus here. So we can see we are one, two, three, four, five, six units away and we are one, two, three away from the focus. All right, on the fourth circle out, it means we have to be eight units away from the focus. So eight units is at the intersection. Again, let's confirm. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units to the directrix. And we are one, two, three, four units to the focus. And similarly, opposite this point, we have another point here. And if I continue in this fashion, I end up back on the horizontal line again. So let's try and connect a smooth curve through all of these points. Try and be as smooth as possible. Not being very successful, but you get the idea. So what you can see is we have formed an ellipse. All right, so I'll keep the directrix where it is. Let's do one final example. And no points for guessing what we're going to be doing because when the eccentricity is greater than 1 we are going to get a hyperbola. So let's choose E equals 2. So 2 is greater than 1. So on the horizontal line the point here we're 4 units away from the focus and that means we have to be 2 units away from the directrix because this length here divided by this length has to equal 2. On the next circle out we are 5 units away which means we have to be 2.5 units from the directrix so 2.5 units is approximately here and here we are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from the focus. So on the opposite side I can mark the point here and if I continue in this fashion okay now an interesting thing happens at this point here because here we are one two three four five six away from the directrix here and we are how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve units away from the focus if we follow this circle down onto the horizontal we will see that this point here is also one two three four five six away from the directrix now so on all subsequent circles out from this point here so say on the 13th circle out we should have a point that's here so six and a half away from the directrix we can also follow this down so that it is six and a half units away from the directrix which will be approximately at this point here. If I follow this pattern you can see what is happening so if I connect now all of the dots as smoothly as I can which I probably can't you can see what I end up with is a pair of hyperbole. So as you can see the conic section is closed when the eccentricity is less than 1. It opens up into a parabola when it equals 1 and opens up further into hyperbole when it is greater than 1. And that'll do it for this video. If you have found this video useful, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel for more helpful math tutorials. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask by commenting below. And until next time, best of luck.